in season two, we really get the power that is the Asgard. They come away, they come and wipe out Errors Camp in, in Thor's Chariot, for instance. By season three, in an episode called Fair Game, Thor reveals to us that, you know, we may be all powerful, but we can't come to your rescue, you know, when necessarily when the Goa will, you know, come knocking for Earth again. We have our own problems to deal with, and they are far worse. And I remember Daniel's reactions like, worse? There's another race out there that's worse. What inspired the replicators? Um, so first of all, one of the pitfalls of uh, you know a science fiction show in general, and this was sort of this is a rule I always sort of took with me and 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 advised other writers about, and that is, and you know, you can almost see the same problem. Well, I don't know if you'd call it a problem because it's certainly very successful, but you know, the Marvel universe had this, this phenomenon play out in it too, is that, is that in order to escalate that battle of save the world and your, your bad guys continually get more and more powerful. And, and part of the problem we had was, you know, the Gould were so powerful, um, yeah, and and then and then the Asgard came in, and they were even more powerful. Like they just seemed almost magical in terms of their godlike power. How do you how do you rationalize them not just like I again? I had this problem with Superman. I mean, I don't understand why Superman ever had a problem, you know, dealing with anybody. He 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 seemed godlike, and yeah, just go around the world and you know go yeah, back in time yeah, and solve it. Yeah, exactly. So. There's always a danger in making your bad guys or your good guys too powerful, and uh, and so that was that was the immediate problem that I felt needed to be solved in Fair Game is why doesn't Thor just come save the day all the time? And you know it was kind of the Q phenomenon in 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 Next Generation, yeah. right? You know, it's like, why, if you have this magic power, why not just fix it all the time? Yeah. Uh, and it, and I didn't like the fact that in that situation, it seemed to come down to a personality quirk, right? Like, it's like, I just don't want to, and or you have to beg me, or it comes down to my ego. It felt, that feels like the writer is just, frankly, you know, being a puppet master. Sidestepping right? the issue. Yeah. And so I, I, to me, that was a big problem with the Thor mythology was that he was, he and the Asgard were, were frankly too powerful and, and needed a kryptonite, you know, needed some explanation for, for why they couldn't just come, you know, deal with, uh, with the gold. And so, so it was, it was about, okay, well, what are they dealing with? What, what is the, what is the weakness or the or the war they're fighting on on another front? And uh, you know, look, I, I think at the time, the uh, Terminator would have been an inspiration for me, or or the Borg. I think had just had just come out. Uh, there was an episode of that, and I I, I love the idea of um, of a of a villain you couldn't negotiate with. It, there was no uh mind games <laughs> you know you were playing it wasn't about uh it wasn't about that and 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 i also you know i love the idea of uh you know creating essentially the science fiction version of cockroaches that just right were were prolific and and they were you know just when you thought you had gotten rid of them more more showed up and you're dealing with a virus. You're dealing with something that, yeah. that yeah. by its nature, all it does is consumes and makes more. And of does, yeah, it doesn't care. Doesn't it? Isn't it? Isn't a, you know, it, it isn't uh, emotional in any way, and uh, uh, so you can't appeal to it, <laughs> you know, logically or emotionally. Um, yeah, and 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 also. Frankly, um, one of the things we talked about a lot in the writer's room was the sort of understandable, but at the same time, moral questionable aspect of 
mowing down Jaffa, <laughs> you know, all the time. I mean, they were. It's true. You know, kind of subjugated. Uh, I wouldn't say necessarily. I wouldn't call them innocents, but but they they were the pawns. They were, well, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, they were they were living, breathing things, and you know, it, it becomes about that. And look, it's an interesting, dramatic thing. The question of, of, of killing the enemy in war. I mean, what is what are they? There was something uh, more sort of video game fun and and not at all uh, morally questionable about just how, you know, shooting replicators. I mean, Who's your daddy? <laughs> like Rick does. You could really uh, full heartedly enjoy as he does. That that process yeah like you know th there's a there's a guilt that comes with with killing another being despite the fact that they might have killed you um there's on some level you're like well maybe i could have just worked it out uh but with this it's like no, no no you have no choice but to shoot them all and 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 that was kind of a, a um you know a lot of fun i've just got a few minutes uh left with you here this has been fascinating, and I'm going to skip over the content that I had uh, for myself because some fans uh, have wanted to, to reach out and ask a couple of questions here. Um, so Max says, uh, hello from Argentina. Regarding books and comics, uh, were you and Brad involved in anything about what happened to them? Uh, yes and no. I mean, again, we, we were very busy making the show. Uh, <laughs> We definitely uh, wanted the merchandise, you know, the ancillary kind of creative material mm. to be up to the standards of the show and reflect the the franchise properly. Um, there were some of the authors that we spoke to of the books at times where they would run the stories by us and, you know, we would kind of comment on what would and potentially wouldn't happen in that universe or in our universe but a lot of it was you know really those people taking off and running with with something that was sort of outside the mythology of the show um the comics i can't i mean, the only time i can speak to specifically um i did consult quite a bit on the uh the universe one that involved the sort of uh telford backstory um that was one where uh, that was sort of a, we were looking for, again, one of those elements that was there in the mythology, but hadn't mm -hmm. been kind of explored. And, and, um, and I felt like that was a great, uh, part of the, part of the story that could have been, that could be unpacked. It was like backstory, but at the same time was, was potentially felt relevant. One of the things that people keep on going back and forth about in the uh, in the online threads is the uh, des is the SGU uh, restart comics that find a group of ancients on board Destiny, and everyone's like, "Is this canon? Is this canon?" To my understanding, that was not your intent. Is that right? No. Okay. Okay, that's fair. Thank you for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving us a thumbs up with that like button. It will encourage the algorithm to show this to other Stargate fans. Also, please consider sending this to a fellow Stargate friend. I also want to invite you to subscribe to future episodes right here on YouTube. We are a live show, so changes are likely to happen all the time. And if you plan on joining us live, you'll want to be the first to know. Be sure to visit dialthegate.com for the complete guest schedule so you'll know when to join us and ask your very own questions to our guests. See you on the other side.